May the Lord bless and keep you. Let's go to Ephesians chapter 4, verse 29. To the left is the King James Version. To the right is the Expanded Bible. Let no corrupt communication proceed out of your mouth, but that which is good to the use of edifying, that it may minister grace unto the hearers. So what does it mean by let no corrupt communication proceed out of your mouth don't curse people out don't slander people there are so many people that use curse words and some of those people call themselves Christians using curse words is not the thing to do that is sinful some people, what word was it? There was this one person that I used to speak with and this person thought that the D word was not a cuss word or the S word. And I am thinking, what world do you live in? <laughs> People are so casual with their words. I know for myself, yes, when I was in sin, I cursed quite a bit. But if you are trying to get close to God, you have to change your words. So don't curse people out. Don't curse. Don't slander people. Don't say rude things. I know for myself as well. Especially when I was in sin, I would joke with people so much. And back then, I guess I hung out with different types of people. And I thought that, hey, I can joke with the people that I help. No. <laughs> As it seems, it seems like the people that I help, I have to be really, really, really careful of what I say. It is not so much that I mean any harm or I am saying something really bad. If a person takes it in the wrong way, Hey, that means I have to stop it. So now I don't really joke nearly as much as I did before because the people that I speak to now or message now, they don't take it in the way that I take it. So if I am offending them by what I am saying, I have to stop. Clear and simple. Okay. So let no corrupt communication, so bad words, talking trash about people, don't do that. But that is, no, but that which is good to the use of edifying. So what does edifying mean or edify? Let's look it up. Instruct or improve someone morally or intellectually. So, when you are edifying a person, hey, let me show you the right way. Let me show you on how to improve in this or that. We all should be doing this to each other, not just one person or this person over there no because you may see something in me that is wrong that I don't see I may see something in you that you don't see so if we are edifying each other we can improve much more I am not listen I 
I have seen prideful people where they want to tell you what you need to change and what you need to do, but if someone corrects that person, that person is going to raise their voice and tell you how much you are wrong, and they may even justify the wrong that they are doing. I am not going to be that way because how can you elevate much more in God? How can you improve much more in God when you are not willing to take correction from a person? That is going to hurt you much more than anything else because I know that I don't know everything. <laughs> So if I don't know everything, obviously there have to be a person that knows something that I don't know. So my ear is open to people. Of course, I am going to judge everything based upon the word of God, of course, because there are some demonic people out there that is willing to tell you wrong information to send you on the wrong path so I am going to use wisdom and you need to as well but never get to the point where you are so prideful that you are not willing to hear a person out that is dangerous that is dangerous you are going to get in so much trouble being that way pride Pride is really going to hurt you. I know for myself, <laughs> when I was in sin, I was prideful and arrogant as well. And my Lord, so many bad things happened to me because of that. So I don't like being punished by God. So let me do it the right way the first time other than holding back or rebelling against God and being punished by it. Okay, let's continue. So let no corrupt co communication proceed out of your mouth, but that which is good to the use of edifying. So let no foolish words come out of your mouth. What you should be doing is trying to improve people, saying good things to build a person up, not to break them down, that it may minister grace unto the hearers. So you don't want to be saying anything that is rude, crude, or lewd. What you want to do is say things to people that is going to build them up. Hey, I see that you are doing this wrong here and the Bible says, hey, you have to change this and that. This is what we should be doing for each other. If you see me doing something wrong, hey, tell me. It really doesn't matter if I know more than you. Obviously, I don't know everything if I am doing something wrong. <laughs> so if you see me doing something wrong, hey, tell me what I am doing wrong. Because I don't want to continue to do something wrong, then die, then be sent to hell over it. No, correct me, edify me and let me edify you. This is not a one-way thing where I tell you what you need to do and I am this perfect guy. No, I am, no. There are things that I need to work on more and probably some more things that I don't know about. So you need to help me and 
you should allow me to help you. There is nothing wrong. Let me say this too. Some people get this pride where I don't know how to explain it. If you tell them that they need your help, they get this pride and think like, no, I don't. I don't need your help. Like, who are you for me to need your help? Or they have this pride like if you say that they need your help, they believe inside of their hurt minds that you are actually saying to them that they are weak or they are not able to help themselves or they are this kid. They see it as an insult, pretty much, when you say that they need, or yes, when you say that they need your help. Like they see it as like they are some type of kid still if they need someone's help or something. That is pride. If you believe that you can walk on your own two feet and you never need help from anyone in this life, you are mistaken. Everyone in this world is being helped by someone whether you know it or not in some type of way or form you are being helped by someone so to have this demonic pride where you believe i don't need anyone yes you do we all need each other we are not made To live separate as we do now. We were made to join together as one, as one, and praise God as one. We are much more powerful when we join together. If we join together as one, Satan would not be able to do as much mess as he is doing now. Because, let me stop here because I don't want to go into some other stuff and I don't want to confuse anyone about this. Well, let me say this. There is a certain gift or gifts that God gives us all. The gifts that we have from God are made to work together with everyone as one. I may be good at this. You may be good at that. This other person may be good at something else. We may be good at doing something alone but if we come together as one, we are much more powerful. This is why I try to get more people to pray, you know, to have this group prayer and pray often. This is why I try to get more people to read the Bible together as well, because the more we do it as one, the more powerful it is going to be. But people have this pride in this eagle. I don't want to pray with that person or I don't want to read the Bible with you because I can do it alone. Yes, you can do it alone, but there is strength in numbers. People who don't understand that. They believe that they should go out there and do things on their own and have their own church or ministry or... Look, if we help each other, you may be strong where I am weak at. I may be strong where you are weak at. So if we join together, wow, 
demons and Satan should not be able to do or create the chaos that they are now. They do it because we are separated. For whatever reason, we are separated. That's why they can create the chaos as they are now. But if we do together, if we do things together as one, praise God as one, pray to God as one, read the Bible together as one, do everything together as one, I am telling you, so many supernatural things can happen from us by joining together. But everyone wants to do their own thing. Well, I can teach and I don't need you, so let me teach all by myself. Well, I'm a prophet and I don't need you because I have these dreams and visions and stuff like that. Let me start my own ministry. What if that teacher and prophet join together as one? <sighs> Let me say this. And I can be wrong about this. I don't think one person has all the gifts that God gives to people. Why is that? Because God want us to come together as one. Why not, if that is not the case, why not give each person all the gifts that God can give to all of us? So let's say that there are 50 gifts. Why not give each person those 50 gifts? We are made to come together as one. So I can work my gift with your gift. So on and so on. This is what we were, we were made for. Not to separate and all this foolishness here. I pray that this makes sense. Let me say this. When you go to heaven, there is not going to be any separation. <laughs> Everyone is going to come together as one and praise God. I'm a Christian and you are a Christian as well, but you want to do your own thing and I want to do my own thing and that person wants to do their own thing. It was not meant to be that way. This is why demons can play the tricks and create the chaos that we see now. Because we are weaker when we are separated. Let me stop here. God bless you. If this video have helped you in any way, make sure you share it and subscribe. God bless you.